With record-breaking speed, Ingenuity soared out ahead of Perseverance to scout a key location that can help clarify the history of the Jezero fan deposit, but it also has weird rocks that are hard to explain. On this episode of Mars Guy, more than a decade before Perseverance arrived, Mars geologists concluded that Jezero Crater once held a lake and that sediments washed into it to create a delta deposit. But observations by Perseverance have challenged the delta interpretation and raised questions about the origin of strange curvilinear features on top. Perseverance first explored these features eight months ago, capturing this epic mosaic. Here's Mars Guy for scale. It shows what may be the planed off tops of tilted layers of bedrock laid down by a meandering river that once flowed into Jezero. Known as point bar deposits, they're relatively common on Earth and fairly easy to understand as sediments that are deposited when a river channel migrates over time. But the curvilinear features on Mars don't check all the boxes. Now that Perseverance has gotten a close-up look, there are new observations that must be addressed, as outlined in this abstract for an upcoming science conference presentation. An opportunity to do so is what drew attention to this location on the Jezero fan. In one small area, it has all three of the major terrain types found on the fan top, including a sliver of the curvilinear unit, some of the margin carbonate unit that Perseverance has most recently been exploring, and the bouldery ridge forming unit made by raging floodwaters. To geologists, places like this provide an opportunity to understand the stratigraphic relationships between rock units. Ingenuity was called upon to scope it out before committing Perseverance to a long detour from its ultimate route out of Jezero Crater. Ever the engineering pioneer, Ingenuity was commanded to fly this mission, flight number 62, at the fastest speed yet, 10 meters per second. The previous record speed was a mere 6.5 meters per second set on flight 49 back in April, so a big jump. It flew out about 150 meters to a place where it could get a good view of the different terrain units and shoot some color images. This one shows the boulder ridges on top of the fractured bedrock of the margin carbonate unit and also a relatively clear path in for Perseverance. Two and a half weeks later, Perseverance was in this very spot, shooting its own images of the same scene and ready to drive in to explore the different terrain units. The next drive covered an impressive 292 meters ending right in front of the contact between the margin carbonate and curvilinear units. And now for the first time, it can be clearly seen that the rocks of the curvilinear unit rise above the margin carbonate rocks, which means that they were deposited directly on top, a stratigraphic relationship that wasn't obvious from the orbital views. Perseverance pivoted 180 degrees and backed onto the rocks of the curvilinear unit probably to avoid shadowing the work area that it will investigate with the arm-mounted instruments. From here, it captured this strangely shaped outcrop of rock that seems oddly out of place among the otherwise flat-lying slabs of outcrop of the curvilinear unit. But literally looking past this seemingly anomalous rock, it's at least possible from here to recognize a sequence of events starting with deposition of the rocks of the margin carbonate unit, followed by the curvilinear unit, and then the bouldery unit on top. This is basic field geology. It may not be as instructive as the Rosetta Stone, but the fact that we can do it with a robotic field geologist on another world is at least a profoundly remarkable accomplishment.